All right, Mike, you got the invocation for us this morning. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning, this gathering of friends, and the good food you have put before us. We are grateful for all that you have provided, our comfortable lives, our wealth, our health, and we recognize that it is our obligation to share with the least of us. Keep us ever mindful of the Rotary motto, the service of the Zach Engel is visiting from Summit with us this morning. He's in the back over there. Uh, Mike Conrad has a guest this morning. I do. You want to stand? Uh, Eric Durham, who works with me at JDRF. So give him a nice rotary welcome. Hey, Lisa Simpson has a guest this morning. Yes, please welcome um, Jeff Powell. Jeff is with Cornerstone Wilt. And just opened an office here in Greensboro. He and his wife recently, last within the last year, moved from Seattle to North Carolina. So he wants to join. I think. Like great club. <laughs> All right, Dale. Anybody get any orders? tickets. I'm mixing the format up better. Rusty and uh, Buster pretty much talked me out of doing this ever again. But I have a blast. I'm going to agree. You're welcome. Guys, yeah, 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 if you don't know how to play connect for it, that's just a shame. Alright, so I'm going to find a table to pick on. I guess I'll start back here. Alright, so from the field. From the field. Only from this table. First person answer. Alright, you guys ready? Everybody ready? Alright. First person answer. How many electoral votes does it take to be elected president? Right there. You got it the fastest. Good job. Three tickets for you. All right. Good work. Good work. All right. All right. And now this minute, uh, lead off with um, Dorothy's uh, Polio Plus uh, project. Um, Dorothy, before uh, she heads north to Baltimore, is making an amazing push from the club to make sure. Uh, we reach our goal club uh, requirement. You guys know you have the uh, Polio Plus uh, cups that she's put out. Um, let's make sure we get some uh, donations in there. Um, I think uh, Dorothy was correct last year. Uh, the club kind of um, had to come out of pocket to uh, take care of our Polio Plus obligation. She'd really like to get this done and uh, taken care of for the club before uh, she departs. So thanks for that big push. And, uh, you know, if, if you didn't read Dorothy's email, um, it's got some great stats in there. You definitely need to uh, read through that. Um, when do you get the chance? Well, we got a football pool? Uh, we have a football pool. Boy, what a weekend. Oh, what a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You can you can ask for better upsets, especially when Oklahoma gets to be in that when it's week. I know you guys love that. Um, let's see. Um, there's also... Really, you guys did much better than typical. 
But um, I know we've got some new members, and I don't think that you guys can explain to them how it works. Uh, Lisa, when you um, <laughs> you circle the winners, <laughs> which you think are going to win the game, but you can't always go by the most the, the toughest mascot. <laughs> Lions are tougher than eagles, but you know it doesn't always work that way. Anyway, rate, you did get. Um, out of 22, what's called the Dud Award. Now, sometimes this is better than the real award. So, Strike anybody out that Dennis is giving away milk duds. <laughs> My wife called me on that several times. But, yeah. um, at any rate, um, at the Cobbler, he told me you got to know the losers to pick the winners. And he wrote on his uh, deal this time, playing to win, so that I would know he wasn't playing for the milk. <laughs> and he got, um, along with two other guys, 15 out of 22. Um, let's see, also, uh, let's see, Mike Allen, yeah. <laughs> the usual, and, uh, and Tom Phoenix. And it came down to the tiebreaker, uh, Georgia versus UNC. And I think we all know that uh, Tom is never going to pick UNC over anybody. He picked Georgia and thus uh, won the tiebreaker. So, right. Tom receives a uh, mug uh, donated by Lewis Storage. And I don't know about you guys, I have had a lot of these travel mugs. This is the best daggum travel mug. It is hard to clean. So, if I can bring it by your place to get it clean. <laughs> Top this. <laughs> right. All right, golf czar Justin Plummer. Yeah, um, we still have one team. Um, so if you'd like to play September 20th in the golf tournament versus the Columbus Club, uh, we still are taking uh, money and uh, registration forms to the rest of the week uh, into a little bit of next week. I'd like to get it done before, say Wednesday next week. Um, and I think Chris will get some more information on the district golf tournament for, I think that's October, the day it's in the middle of October. So we'll have more information on that next week. Feel free to call me or text me, email me. We'll get you signed up. All right, very good. And just a reminder to everybody, uh, our next board meeting, if you're uh, trying to attend, is at my office, and that's this coming Tuesday, uh, September 13th. Chip, you want to say anything? I guess this will be the last time you say anything about grants, right? About, about the mini grants? Yeah. <laughs> now, actually, what we're going to talk about is pick stock. Pick stock's coming up uh, October the 29th. We're going to have our first practice cook on October the 2nd. I know I told you it'd be in September, but the first date in late September, we don't have a home game and other conflicts, is October the 2nd. So that'll be the first cook. It'll be at my house. Uh, we'll be cooking uh, two Boston butts and probably some chicken, some beef, and some other stuff. We're going to be able to feed. 35, 40 people, so we're going to need volunteers, you know, like Chicken Little to come help eat at the end of the day, yep. or people to come help cook during the day. I'll get out the email. Be on the team, all you have to do is show up and uh, be willing to maybe bring beer, drink beer, and maybe a side dish. We'll have plenty of meat. The meat will be covered with chicken, ribs, um, beef tenderloin, actually we call that long brisket. Uh, Carolina long brisket. And Boston butts. So anyway, October the second, first cook, I'll be getting an email out sooner or later. Uh, yeah. I probably like All day. about 7 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> then we'll probably go until well after we're all too tired to uh, really want to drive home. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it'll be an all day event. Thank you. All right, is Dale Hopkins here today? I didn't see Dale this morning. All right, guys, uh, don't forget Clean Sweep. I know you sent out the uh, emails and uh, sent out the uh, reminders, but Clean Sweep is, uh, I guess, this Saturday. So this Saturday out there uh, for probably about an hour on. Uh, Clean sweep. Chip, you wanted to say something about the code drive. It looks like uh, we have quite a few coats brought in today. So good job, Gate City. And, and a great assortment. Thank you. Calling off coats, jackets, and blankets. This is for the Dare to Share program. My daddy Childress, you remember, was here back in July and made an appeal for uh, coats and jackets for homeless and, and uh, newly settled people. I'll be out in the parking lot afterwards. I'll 
I might even need some help carrying those out, but if you have some in your, uh, in your car and want to transfer them to mine, I'll just be right out in the middle of the uh, parking lot. Thanks. All right. Buster, happy dollars. Happy dollars. I've been waiting on them. <laughs> I'll see Dr. Tom with his dollars. We got a brunswick steel. We're going to be cooking the kids for Christ. I'll come to the first. And if they like brunswick steel, some don't. But if you like brunswick steel, there's none better. And I've been responsible for the rest pay for about 15 years. So <laughs> I'll take the lame or credit for it. How much is the food? $8 a quarter. You know, it's a bargain in the food. Oh, yeah. oh no. And I'll tell you what, in, in about January, January about five o'clock when you're wondering what to have for supper. That's right. If you remember you got some of those brunch right. in there. Right. That's a sweet. Okay. Welcome back, David. Thank you, Buster. Uh, Bull Pride was, was just killer this year. Great, great time. Back without injuries, no sickness. Brought the whole team back. Uh, phenomenal. Wild. We had the Rangers uh, call us off in one section of the Chobie because the, the cats were really busy out there for for a few days. So I didn't see any big cats, but a lot of elephant, a lot of giraffe, a lot of zebra, a lot of you name it. It was, uh, it was everywhere. It felt like I was in the middle of a Disney movie half the time, you know, with a poor dog driving along. But, but uh, so far, we think we've raised about 81000 for uh, for well drilling, and we were there while we were putting down our 50th well. So uh, it was really great to see that thing hit and the slush come out, and that uh, village of about 120 all gathered around. Uh, this was like Super Bowl for them. So it was amazing. It was an amazing trip, and I'll share a little bit more in October. Thank you. Welcome back, David. Mark Reynolds uh, did his house two weeks ago. I think I told you we did Beth Sheffield, did her harvest course and her new fight, and that's great. Then Lisa um, Simpson is allowing us to do harvest flooring in her house. And then last but not least, I'd like to um, thank Mark for um, taking care of my dog. Not Mark. My wife. One of those medical people that. <laughs> bucket list thing for me is we've been out west a lot we've, we've, we've been all over I have never seen a bear in the wild and we were up at Mount Mitchell this weekend and we saw a bear so Chip we've got a new category now on big stuff bring him more cookies it really excited me to see a bear in the wild the other thing is, is big stuff the other clubs are really gunning for us I went to right. Guilford yesterday Tuesday and that Gilbert's paid for everybody in the club to do big stuff. Um, so uh, I get an email every day from uh, Greensboro Club. They're very excited. The Airport Club has put in a grant request from their foundation. So uh, in the coming weeks, I'll be showing you the, the different ways that we can all support if you'd like the sponsorship or if you'd like to pledge your Paul Harris Society to the, um, uh, to, the, to the program. Anyway, in the coming weeks, we'll share that. Thanks. Very nice. I have two happy dollars. One is my husband, uh, 33 years of marriage, is celebrating a big birthday on Tuesday next week. So, Jimmy is going to be 60. I'm sure he wants everybody in the room to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, um, y'all might have gotten my email this past week for our open house. It's going to be next Thursday at, um, on the 15th at the Cook Store in Burlington. We'd love for everyone to try to come if they could. We're going to have different vendor tables set up. One of them's going to be the swarm, and they're actually going to be giving away tickets to the store prizes. So if you need any more information on that, please reach out. Thank you. <coughs> well, you know, David, it's fun to keep up with uh, the Hope Ride on Facebook. You see your pictures. And <coughs> Greg Pappy, you know, he's always intrigued by Facebook, but he wasn't big on computers. So, he decided he was going to see if he could get that similar experience without a computer. So he started walking down the street and uh, sharing with random people, you know, pictures of his vacation and talking about what he had for supper and uh, <laughs> pictures of his kids. And, and then he would eavesdrop on conversations. And if he liked what he heard, he'd give him the thumbs up. <laughs> and he said, you know, it's really worked very similar to Facebook. And, uh, 
he actually had uh, s some followers now, and uh, two policemen and a psychiatrist. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, today, always a good day in Rotary, we're going to induct a new member. So if uh, Gigi Renault, if you will come up, Chip as her sponsor, Cheryl, if you'll come up, and uh, Robbie, if you will come up and do the invitation. Next one. Yeah. yeah, Ken, we are going to get you in. Uh, and just so you know, I actually attended Gate City Rotary for like nine months before I was inducted. So this is not out of the ordinary at all. But we will, we will get you inducted next week. Or whenever the batch comes. That's right, when the batch gets here. Well, good morning, folks. As you will recall from our great celebration this past summer, Gate City Rotary was founded in May of 1991 uh, with an eye towards service and sweat equity and giving back to our community and to our world, consistent with the aims and goals of Rotary International. At this time, it is our great pleasure to introduce Gigi to you and with her sponsoring member as the latest member. And on behalf of the Board of Directors and our members, we sincerely welcome you here, Gigi. Our welcome here is not only in anticipation of the good fellowship we'll share with you here on Thursday mornings, as you've already partaken of somewhat this morning, and during social outings, as has also been alluded to, we welcome you for your strong arm and sturdy back, which will help us carry out our many service projects, which, in a small yet significant way, make our community, our country, and our world a better place for all to live. Now, for all here Rotarians and non-Rotarians alike, let's be reminded of these important facts. First, Rotary is not a political organization, but all Rotarians are vitally concerned with everything pertaining to good citizenship and the election of good men and women to public office. Rotary is not a charitable organization, yet its activities exemplify the charity and the sacrifices that one should expect from people who believe that they have a responsibility to help others. And Rotary is not a religious organization, but it is built on those eternal principles that have served as the moral compass for people throughout the ages, as well as the foundation of our great country. Well, Rotary is an organization of business and professional people pledged to upholding the highest professional standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and international peace can be achieved when business people unite under the banner of service. And so at this time, I would like to request Everyone, please stand for delivery of the following charge. <clears throat> you, Gigi, have been chosen for membership of the Rotary Club of Gates City. Your sponsor and fellow members believe you to be a leader in your special line of work and that you embody the qualities of head and heart that fit you to interpret and impart the message of Rotary. You are the representative of your vocation to this club. And at the same time, you now become an ambassador of Rotary and we will rely on you to carry the principles and ideals of service to those with whom you work. Additionally, we expect you to help inspire us, your fellow members, to become better Rotarians. And now I ask the sponsoring member uh, to present her with the distinguishing lapel pin of Rotarian. Chip. And with that, uh, it is our hope that you will wear it proudly for others to see, Gigi. Also included will be your official certificate of membership in Rotary and a declaration of the four-way test, which we say every Thursday morning as we begin our meetings and allow me to offer you at this tent the right hand of fellowship and a warm rotary welcome on behalf of our club. Let's welcome Gigi. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here today. A special thanks to Chip and Cheryl who encouraged me to uh, 
be part of the group and to my colleague Amy who, who originally introduced me to Wotun. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, uh, I'm Gigi Wono. I am the finance director of the Center for Creative Leadership, so I do the numbers <laughs> <laughs> during the day. And uh, at night, I love to socialize. So wine tasting is one of my favorite activities. So I've already checked out some of the watery social activities to see how I can participate. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I am looking forward to be part of this group and the services that we do for the, for the community. And uh, I've learned about uh, most big stuff today and a whole bunch of other things coming up. So definitely looking forward to that. And I want to thank everybody for the warm welcome today. Thank you. Chip will uh, work with you to show you how to convert that from the red to the uh, the blue. Okay, there we go. We'll get you uh, in line for treasurer right away. <laughs> All right, Ralph, guess for us. We've got an exciting one today, guys. Um, Steve will so, excuse me, Swatoa. I want to thank you to Greensboro. Or thank you to coming for, to Greensboro. First off, welcome to Greensboro. Thank you. This is uh, his first season as the president of the Greensboro Swarm of the NBA D League, which is owned and operated by Michael Jordan, the Hornet, and the Hornet Sports and Entertainment. Steve is responsible for all aspects of the organization, which includes ticket sales, corporate partnerships, marketing, promotions, social media, game entertainment, broadcasting, communications, community relations, customer retention ticket operations and building operations, and speaking at community events, <laughs> obviously. Early. Uh, exactly, yeah, very early. Um, prior to his arrival in Greensboro, Steve was a president, general manager, and chief revenue officer of the Tulsa Shock of the women's NBA for the last six years. Steve oversaw basketball operations and the business operations and led the team to their first WNBA playoff appearance in 2015. Steve has experience in the NFL, the NBA, NHL, WNBA, and the ACC in various titles from ranging from Director of Sales of, to Senior Vice President of Sales and Retention and Vice President of Business Operations. The Penguins, the Bobcats, slash Hornets, Jaguars, Magic, and Steam were teams Steve has worked for. So, uh, Steve is also an alum of Robert Morris University where he earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Concentration of Sports Management in 2010. Swatoa so um, was elected to the Robert Moore Sport Management Hall of Fame. Steve also earned his master's degree in sports leadership at Duquesne University. And many of you who don't know, Duquesne is spelled D-U-Q-U-E-S-N-E. -E. I had to Google it last night to make sure I had the right pronunciation. Um, Steve has been active as, as a member of the Tulsa community when he was there for so long where he sat on many boards including the Board of Oklahoma Center for Community and Justice, Community Food Bank of Eastman, Oklahoma, American Disease, or excuse me, Diabetes Association, and the Susan G. Komen. Um, Steve also served as advisory board to the Tulsa Sports Commission and Tulsa Metropolitan Urban League. Steve has served as honorary chair for the Suman, Susan G. Komen race for the Cure and Pink Stiletto Gala. Gala. Steve was also on the steering committee in the annual Boys and Girls Club Metro Tulsa Golf Tournament. In 2014, Steve was named as a Susan, one of the Susan G. Komen Pink Tie Guys for the city of Tulsa. Steve was a member of the leadership of Tulsa class of 46. So obviously he gives back to his community, so possibly if he can get up early. He said he's an early riser, so maybe you can join us. I, I would love to have you. Um, Steve is married to Susan Shepard. They have a daughter, Sophia, who is 11 and will be attending OLG this fall. Steve has al also has a son, Matthew, who is 20, and is a sophomore studying aviation at the University of North Dakota. So please give a warm welcome to Steve Spatella. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Tudy, can you maybe help with the slide presentation? I think I'd probably stand up here and if you don't mind. Well, thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, I kept getting reminders, don't forget 7 a.m., 7 a.m. I'm an early riser, so Ralph, I, I would love to consider, there's a lot going on, but uh, I hear this is a great club and 
we've met Judy and Jimmy when we first got here back in February. So thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes. I want to leave a few minutes for questions. So I do have a quick, quick presentation for everybody who does not have maybe been sleeping on their rock and have not uh, made aware of the Greensboro swarm coming to Greensboro this fall. So about the D-League itself, uh, there are 22 teams. The league has been in existence for a long time, but um, it has changed quite a bit. There were teams, Asheville, North Carolina, Fayetteville, uh, owned by independent operators. The difference here now is that NBA team owners own these teams. And so for Charlotte, with Michael owning the Hornets and now us, matter of fact, we were just here for an executive retreat uh, a few weeks ago, um, it's an extension of the NBA brand here in Greensboro, but I will specifically say very, very important, this is our team here in Greensboro. So I want to make that, make that very clear because 90 miles, give or take, is still 90 miles, but this is our team here. Uh, we live here, I live in Summerfield, so north of the city. As uh, Ralph mentioned, I have a daughter who is uh, in 11 years old going to LG, so uh, we're, we're very excited about being part of the community. You may not know this, but there are 22 teams in our league, and this is a, a quick map of where they are located. Um, we need some help on the southeast. I think Atlanta will be coming in here in the next few years, hopefully, along with Washington. But of those 22 teams, I would say 17 or 16 of those are owned by NBA franchises. Uh, more recently, <coughs> us being owned by Michael, Chicago being owned by the Bulls, Windy City and then Brooklyn owned by the New Jersey Nets are the three most recent teams that have entered this league for 16 and 17. So scattered across the country. Why Greensboro? Well, seven cities originally back a year ago um, to three cities, obviously Greensboro, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and um, Asheville was the last, those three cities. 90 miles from Charlotte, the brand, number, more importantly, the NBA franchise, Greensboro, um, has been the number one market of buying NBA tickets within the region. So that certainly helped our sort of cause, so to speak. But it's easy to get players back and forth. It's a really easy drive for those who have made the trip back and forth on 85. Um, we can have, if Kemba Walker, as an example, is hurt, he's on a rehab assignment here in Greensboro tonight, as an example. He can get his car after the game, drive back to Charlotte tonight, and be ready to suit up for tomorrow night's game in Charlotte for the NBA uh, aspect. So uh, it's a rich basketball market, as everyone here who's from this market knows. I was with the Bobcats early on, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the region. Um, it's a great basketball market and a lot of tradition here. And as everyone knows, it's, it's called Tournament Town. So hopefully we can continue to get the ACC and other tournaments on a yearly basis. You know, Matt Brown and Scott Johnson and the City Council and all these guys have made a huge um, uh, push for us to come here. We'll get into it in a little bit, but we're playing in the, the revised, renovated pavilion. It's almost a $6 million project, and we'll get to that in a second, but um, this is a great community. Um, people have been fantastic. It has been a warm community, very sincere. Um, but more importantly, we as an organization, regardless of who we're owned by, and regardless of the NBA product, it's really important, and Judy and Jimmy probably will share this with you, we have to earn respect of this community from a business perspective. Um, regardless of all the experience that Ralph shared with you a few minutes ago, that really means nothing until we actually make an impact in this community. Um, so now, when the bio is updated, um, uh, I just told to you this morning I was I'm on the Coleman board out of Winston that starts tomorrow uh, I was just elected to the YMCA board here locally with uh, James Smitty who owns a few McDonald's in the market and there'll be a few more that we want to make an impact in and this is a club certainly that we should consider as an organization so not because I'm standing up here but uh, it seems like it's a very sports-minded club number one um, every Thursday, I'm up early anyway, so we'll, we'll have to talk about that offline, Judy and, and Ralph, so thank you for that. The importance of the D-League. Um, NBA rosters carry anywhere from 13 to 15 players. Um, believe it or not, there was about 41% of 
of the players that played in our league this past season that were on NBA rosters throughout the year, 41%. So um, it happens. Players that have played in our league are playing on NBA rosters and actually making a huge contribution, whether it be a guy out of San Antonio or Dallas or what have you. So you're going to be seeing a lot of NBA players through here. Our goal is to get as many local guys as we can that have played at the ACC schools and other schools not related to the ACC, and I want to make sure I, I get don't get myself in trouble. My first meeting with the Sports Commission back in February, I forgot to mention A and T, right? So I got some heat from that for that. But from Guilford to to Greensboro to UNCG, obviously to A and T to Elon and all those smaller schools, High Point. Um, you know, there's a kid by the name of John Brown that played at High Point that I saw play this past season. Um, if he doesn't make an NBA roster, there's an opportunity he, he may decide to play here versus playing overseas. So we announced that the team was coming in Greensboro in October of uh, 15. Uh, for those who may have been at the HACO tournament on um, Tuesday the 29th, we announced our team name, the Greensboro Swarm. And as you can see, the logo is pretty familiar or synonymous with the NBA logo of, of Charlotte, simply because we're trying to grow the brand with the Hornets. Um, we play a preseason game here on October 6th, and that will certainly be uh, something that we will consider often now that our team is here from a daily perspective. So we're just trying to grow the brand of basketball, and the, the logo is pretty synonymous with the NBA team and with the Hornets. We just named our uh, new head coach, Neil, Noel Gillespie, uh, last month. He was an assistant with Denver over the past 10 seasons. Prior to that, he was with uh, Phoenix. A guy that is very passionate about coming here and wanting to develop our players. He will actually, he's out of Charlotte right now. Uh, the Hornets start training camp, I believe, at the end of this month. And he will be in camp with Coach Clifford because all of Cliff's offensive sets, defensive sets, out of bounds plays, the culture, Noel will learn because when we get players here, we want them to understand the same process going back and forth. So, uh, pretty excited about Noel and his staff coming here this fall. Mentioned the field house, and if for those who may not be able to see in the very, very back, maybe not even in the front, the picture is so small, but we hosted a retreat here a few weeks ago, Terry, correct? I'm sorry, uh, from Tony, sorry. Um, and we hosted it here at, at uh, the O. Henry. And um, Michael Jordan was here for the retreat uh, for us for the day. And uh, it was pretty impressive. That's really the, f not the first time, but he was very engaged. He's very, um, he wants to make this work in this market. And certainly we want to build an NBA caliber championship team in uh, Charlotte as well. But um, we're playing in the renovated field house. It will only have 2,200 seats. Um, that's a picture outside of where the main entrance will be, and that's all of our executive staff. And Michael was somewhere in that front right, sort of the tallest guy, I think, there. Um, but very excited about playing here this fall. We played 24 home games, 24 away games, total of 50 games. There are two games played in an off-site venue. Um, we open up at home on Saturday night, November 12th. Um, those tickets are not on sale yet, simply because we've had very uh, great success in selling season tickets as we, through today. And so the only way you can get a ticket today would be a season ticket package or a group package. So we plan on sending, selling single game tickets probably late October, but there, our goal is that we won't go on sale with those single games for opening night because our plan is to sell that game out in advance. Um, if you see them, there'll probably be a few seats remaining, but 2,200, that's not a lot of seats. Uh, the perception was we were playing at the Coliseum. It's too big for us. Uh, that's what, 22,000 seats. UNCG plays there. It's a great venue, and those guys have been great, but it just didn't feel right for us playing in that big venue with a very small crowd. So 2,200 seats, and we're excited to tip off this fall. The expansion draft, you probably can't see this. Uh, we tried to make the screen as large as we could. There's a couple of local guys on this roster. These players may decide to sign with us. They're owned by some other teams as well. However, um, um, there's a kid from NC State, I, I believe we drafted. Uh, so uh, you may see some of them here, you may not. Um, our regular draft is late October, and you'll have more of those players attend training camp in addition to those players.
players with the Hornets that may not make the camp or get cut, um, you may see them here in, in Greensboro as well. Open tryout, so Ralph, if you want to lace your shoes up, or anyone else here. Um, on one hand, it's an opportunity to promote our brand in the market, but seriously, uh, every team in our league hosts open tryouts. And we just had three or four guys from some university or college in North Carolina just signed up yesterday to want to be part of our open tryouts. Um, we're hosting those at UNCG on October 2nd. There is a registration fee to join because there's expenses for us to put this event on. But these players that have lifelong dreams to want to play in the NBA have a chance to make our training camp roster coming out of this open tryout. So you have all the Hornets coaches there, you have our coaching staff there, um, and it's a unique opportunity. And there have been a number of players that have made this tryout and have made training camp rosters and up in, and are playing in the NBA today. So there are a lot of guys out there that have dreams about playing in the NBA. This is a great opportunity to potentially to do that. So last, last but not least, but we, you know, we, we have some information that we'll share with you as you leave, hopefully, but uh, join the swarm, so to speak. Our tagline is, uh, this is swarm, but um, it's a unique opportunity. It's something different. For Greensboro, um, we have great sports here. The baseball team with the Grasshoppers have been here for a long time. Uh, but this is a basketball-rich market, and we're hoping to make an impact. It's not just about basketball. I want to make sure we're very clear on that. That's We're here, but we want to give back into the community, and we've already had some inroads with some people in this room already with that process. Uh, it's still early, but here are just some of our local partners and some national partners that we've already signed on board. Uh, we're in con uh, conversations with twice the numbers that are up here right now, but until they actually sign their contracts, we really can't share that information, but some pretty important brands for this market that have already uh, allowed us to be a part of them as well. Key upcoming dates, we talked about the um, open trials in October. There'll be a court unveil that will probably be sh shipped back to October. The Swarm uniforms will be probably announced in October. Um, training camp starts November 1st, media day I think on the 1st, and then we tip off on the 12th. And then as Ralph mentioned or others mentioned about the social media, we're on all aspects of the various platforms. So I wanted to open up, I have some a few minutes for, for any questions, Ralph. Um, we hear about these crazy salaries. Right. What's the average salary for a player? It, it's not a lot. Um, I think there's two or three guys that can make, I want to say, either 29000 or 39000 um, But they make the roster and they get pulled up to the Hornets or they get recruited or assigned by another team. and the, Then they go to the, to the rookie minimum, which is a lot of money. Um, most guys will make $19,000. Yeah, so they, they receive per diem. Um, we cover their housing and transportation when they come in the market, so we're putting them up in an apartment complex here. Uh, they'll receive per diem when they travel on the road. Um, most of these guys, you know, as we all have dreams here along the way, whether it be the bucket list that someone mentioned about traveling, and um, it's amazing some of these guys and their attitude of wanting to get in. You know, you can't go to the NFL and have an open tryout to some degree. This is really the only opportunity to do so. Yes, sir. Uh, Ralph uh, read the list of your particular duties, but how large is your support staff? Great question. We have um, 11 full-time staff. Um, compare that to the WNBA, which played in the summertime. We had a staff of about 18. So a little bit different. Uh, some teams are different, they have more than, than 11. Uh, that's just the business side. We'll have coach, three assistants, director of basketball operations, and a trainer. So you add another five or six. So now we're at 16 or 17 full-time full staff in, in this market. So not a bad number. Where do you see, or do you see, this concept expanding? You know, when you have 
college players talking about getting paid, and you have sort of the model of the Major League Baseball where you have a really robust farm league. Do you ever see this turning into something where a kid would come out of high school to develop and get paid something? Uh, today, no. I think Commissioner Silver is really, you've got to play, you know, no different than the NBA, you've got to play at least one year in college. I don't particularly, I'm not going to say I agree or disagree, but I was listening on the radio this morning coming in on ESPN and they, they talk about NBA, NFL players, guys that are coming out after their second year, maybe because they got hurt and they've, they've been in the third year or they're in their third year. They're not ready for the NFL. Um, most players are not ready for the NFL. I don't see that changing in this league because um, a couple of things. The international flavor has mixed into that decision. A lot of guys that are playing internationally are a little bit older. Um, and, you know, we want to sign players that have high integrity, that have professionalism, and that's a really important aspect of our market because we're going to have these guys in schools here. They're going to be volunteering here. They're going to be at a shelter um, helping with food or clothing. Um, we have a huge um, community initiative that we're going to be announcing here in the next week based on how we're going to make an impact in this market. Um, we've met with the mayor. We've met with Michelle Gaithers Clark with um, United Way to say, what is the need of Greensboro? So going back to your question, we don't feel comfortable in having a high school kid doing that. Playing basketball, he may be skilled, but there's a lot of other things that go into to play there. And Ralph asked the question, you make only 39000 or 29000 Well, why would you not go overseas and make a half million dollars? The problem overseas is you have maybe one international scout for every NBA team. You'll be seeing NBA scouts running through Greensboro 24 times. So we'll be keeping the airport busy, we'll be keeping the hotels busy. Not that that's a lot, but it's some type of economic impact within our community. Um, so I don't see it changing anytime soon. I would hope to see it increase, not decrease, but you have a lot of kids that are coming out of high school that don't want to play college ball. And look at Kentucky, one and done, right? That's probably the most relevant program that you say one and done. And, you know, look back, you know, Aaron Harrison is you know, it was a Kentucky guy. You may see Aaron here this year. We don't know, but you may. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ralph, Judy, for uh, allowing me to come in this morning to share our information. And I, I will certainly be here after if, I, if you have any other questions. But thank you so much for allowing me to come in today. Thanks so much.